Hey guys, so today this video is going to be about how to find people and collaborators to work with for your independent science research. So by that I mean people in universities, supervisors, uh, postdocs, PhDs, and other research organizations. Okay, so let's talk about finding people to work with. Why do you need to find people? To first order, it's the members of the research community that decide what's interesting. And this is a blog post from the famous Terence Tao. Attend talks and conferences, even those not directly related to your work. Know how to listen and you'll profit even from those who talk badly. Modern mathematics is very much a collaborative activity rather than an individual one. Now, if you have a full-time job and you're doing this part-time, this is hard because you don't have access to conferences, university spaces, or seminars. So I'm going to go through some ways that you can try to do this online. The first obvious yet most difficult thing to do is cold emailing people. Cold email a lot of people, but the first thing to you need to remember is that you don't want to push your ideas too early and you should be optimizing for learning from them what the problems are. The sooner you can also get the relationship onto a Zoom call or a phone call, the better. The second way is blogging. I've run a Substack for around three years and two of my major projects I've got through people contacting me on Substack. My biggest tip for Substack is write as often as possible, write to record your results and write in your own voice. Don't worry about being a perfectionist. People just want to see how you think. And the idea is if someone's interested in what you have to say, they'll get in touch and you can start working with them. The third way is Discord, Slack, or other collaborator type channels online. So as you guys know, I already do run a Discord uh, filled with independent scientists, I think like 800 now. And we've already started to match people up to promising like open source projects. For example, those who are interested in coding and physics, uh, we've matched them up to the Physics Lean project, which aims to formalize physics, much like how Mathlib and Terence Tao is trying to formalize mathematics. So eventually we might be able to find AIs uh, discovering new laws whilst also being verified. Now, in terms of physically meeting up with people, if you've emailed someone in a university and they've replied and are keen to chat, you can also just go there if you can afford a train ticket. If you're allowed to, I would also suggest if you're in a city going to research seminars, which are typically open to the public and just showing up and trying to learn something. I wouldn't worry about things being unclear because I can guarantee you everybody feels that way. The one tip I have for fostering really, really positive uh, research relationships is to always just be really supportive of the ideas that people come to you and don't immediately dismiss them. Also, uh, try not to talk about yourself too much when you're in research calls. You'll probably learn a lot more just by listening. The next step is to actually foster those relationships so they don't just die out after the first meet or the first call. To me, the way I've approached building and fostering research relationships is small and regular breadcrumbs. So think about a very small speck of project or idea that you have been speaking to with these people and maybe write a small paragraph about it or write a bit of code. Once you've done that small part, try your best to send it over to them as soon as possible. This will make sure that you have some validation that you're going on the right path and also has the secondary effect of just being in the conversation. And that's what you should be optimizing early on. Another really good side effect is that you learn very quickly who's willing to engage with you and who's willing to not. Ideally, your iteration cycle should be probably on the order of a week. So for example, if you're working on something open source, try to commit something new within the next week. If you're working on a blog post, if the scope of your blog post feels a bit too ambitious, cut the spec so that you can get it out within a week. This will make sure you have time to incorporate feedback from other people and again, acts as a way to cement and solidify the conversation and the streams that you have. Okay, so say it's been three weeks to a month and you've been speaking about an idea with someone. How do you cement that relationship into a working relationship such that you can collaborate on something together meaningfully? Now, the one simple hack that I have for this is a weekly call. So say to them, hey, are you free um, for 10 to 15 minutes every, every week at this time? 
to talk about this problem and uh, check on my progress. You don't want to ask them if they can commit to like an hour a week because that feels like quite committal. But most people would be okay with uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Good for you. I also find that weekly calls are extremely motivating because then you're not just stuck with a hard task and then left alone to struggle with it. The main takeaway that you want from this is to always just be present. So always say something if people are talking about something, uh, make an effort to reach out. Um, if there's a discussion, post your thoughts. Don't worry about people getting irritated. The ones who do get irritated about you actually being there are not worth your time. The best supervisors I've ever worked with are willing to speak about any problem, no matter how dumb or stupid. So just always be on, on it and always be saying stuff and always be involved in the conversation.